So if we take a look at our um, in the labs folder, there's a struct introduction.ex underscore. Um, everybody, why don't you load that up in Ida? We're just going to accept the, the default options for loading it up in Ida. It's going to analyze it. So the struct introduction.ex underscore drag and drop it onto Ida. And accept the uh, default options. And OK until you get to here. So if we take a look at where it brought us, it brought us to the main. And we have, hey, look, Homer, Marge, Hank. We have uh, several different structs in here. Uh, we actually only have one uh, structure type, but several instances of it. Uh, some of them are declared as uh, just regular instances where you, where you uh, declare it. Others are dynamically allocated instances where we see this. I, I just identified this as a call to new. That's your malloc for your new. So. What you do at this point is, okay, it looks like, okay, dynamically allocating memory. Um, I see some accessing of, you know, local variables and such. Then I see this down here of, okay, move var4 into ECX and then ECX plus 20 hex, move one into that. EDX, move var4 into EDX, EDX plus 24 hex, move zero into that. Move our form to EX, EX plus 28 hex, move zero into that. If you see these, these basically it looks like it's indexing into, um, into something like that. It could be maybe an array, or we could have a structure on our hands, which is basically what an array is, right? Array is a structure where you have multiple things that instead of referring to them by name, you refer to them by index position. And they're all the same thing. A struct is where you don't, it's it's not necessarily all the same thing. And in the code, you can refer to them by name. So what you do is take a look and you see, okay, well, there's a, you know, seems to be some some repeating patterns here. I see this offset of 24. I see this offset of 20 referenced multiple times. Offset of 28 referenced multiple times. Um, I don't see any kind of offset that is um, like plus one or plus two. I just see these kind of higher numbered offsets here, which to me indicates, okay, maybe there, maybe it is a structure that's going on here. Something that we can do is take a look at, okay, what's, what's bar 4, EX, bar 38, EX, okay, that's new, but it looks like we have these, these things in memory here. If we take a look at that, we can see that, okay, we have this long string of null bytes, and then this 25 hex, and it looks like we're seeing some some names here, and we see we scroll up in the memory, name long string of null bytes, OCH some more null bytes. Um, so it looks like maybe we have a couple of different structure instances here. Now, how do we figure out what the members are of the struct. I'm assuming that's what it is here. 
Well, one thing we can go is say, well, okay, at, it looks like at offset 20, there's something. At offset 24, there's something. Offset 28, there's something. And that something looks like it's a D word there. D word, D word. So we can go and we can say, okay, <coughs> let's let's say that let's let's write this out. We have maybe a struct called a person, and we have you know, something that is 20 bytes long. Maybe that something is going to get broken up into to, to more than that. Um, but right now, just looking at this, we want to, to get to the point of, OK, at offset 20 hex, we know we have a D word. 24, another D word, 20, another D word. So basically, at offset 20 hex, we have three D words in a row. So let's say. Here we, we got something before it, but then we have say int um, x in y in c. Is there is there a better place than the code? I mean, you were making some very nice inferences about the size and shape of the structure. Is there another place in the code where um, you would see you know the full definition of this? By any chance? Earlier? Where we or does that all get washed away because we're not looking at header files or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, that all, so this is, so, so this is kind of, this is how you identified it. Because right. if, if it's getting, what we end up doing is we identify what offsets within the memory are getting referenced and how those offsets are getting referenced to say, OK, we're inferring that there's a field at that offset, and it's of that size. Maybe it's an int. Maybe it's a pointer. Maybe it's something else that is uh, 32 bits. But just to get an idea, we're going to say, OK, let's just assume for now it's this. And then we can always change that later as we gather more information. So it helps me to, to write it out like that. And what we can do is go through, OK, 20, 24, 28, um, see anything else that, that does addition here, offsetting 20, 24, 24, 28. So it seems like those are the only offsets we're seeing, currently, at least. So let's say, OK, we have a basic idea of, of some kind of structure. And it seems like there are names, so we'll call it person. Let's now define that structure in a way that we can then apply it to, the, uh, to what we're looking at. And the way that you, you do that is you go to your structures window. Um, if you accidentally closed this window, which you can, can certainly accidentally do, oops, closed it, you would get to there through the view, open sub views, structures. There we go, it pops up. Um, something that you will typically see in your structures is this. Uh, other structures that Ida has identified as being used by the libraries, by the API calls that the binary is making. Um, and if you come across um, a call that's being made, you can um, actually apply one of these structures to what you're looking at. We're not going to be doing the, the library structures. We're just going to be doing custom structures. But just keep in mind that once you have a structure defined in this uh, structures portion, you can then apply that to the uh, assembly that you're looking at. We'll go into that uh, after we define it. 
So in order to define a structure ourselves, we would uh, put the cursor above the code there, and we would say, I is being nice and helping us here, insert to create a new structure. So we do the insert key, and we're going to name the swan person, and enter. And it created this person struct. So then I was telling us, OK, to, to create a member of the structure, data, ASCII, or array, we can use these keys. So we come down and within the structure, make sure that, that your cursor is within the structure. You say, uh, let's say this is going to be a, uh, uh, in, in array, because we're not sure. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hold on. A. I guess it's A to do array. So if you if you're in the structure here, you press A, and then you can give it the array size, and we're going to say what was, how many bytes was that in decimal? of our first member there. How many bytes is that in decimal? 32. 32, thank you, Jared. All right, so we're going to say 32 here. Let's say OK. And we're, we don't know what that is, so we'll just leave it as, as field zero. Um, uh, where we have then three D words that follow that. So we're going to put it, the cursor after field zero, but still within the first instruct. And we're going to say D. And we're actually going to say uh, put the cursor on the field that it is created and actually press D two more times so that it is actually a um, D word. Another way of doing this is if you right click on the field, you can go to field type. Um, here's where you can actually say, oh, I think this is a an offset. It's it's a pointer, or this is a uh, this is going to be a, a number. So we have three of those fields. So there's one. So we come down below it, press D again, make sure we're on the field, D, and then below it, a third field, and I, and D. Um, and this is being, I did being helpful up here. It's saying, OK, the size of your struct is now X to C. So now we have these, these fields. Um, and we don't know what exactly they are yet. So we're just leaving them as field 0, 20, 24, 28. But if we go back to our code, we can now come down here and we can say, OK, well, I, I want to see this as instead of ECX plus 20 hex, I want to see that as actually a reference to that field. You can press T. Make sure your cursor is on it. Press T. And it's going to say, here are the fields within structures that I know about that are at position. 20, and you see your person dot field 20. Say, OK, do that. You can do that for each of these. You can also, this is a nice little shortcut, highlight multiple and say T. It's going to come up and say, OK, I, I'm guessing I'm seeing offsets off register EDX. Do you want that? Yep, we're going to use that. And then it's going to say, which structure do you want me to? 
go off of. And we're going to say the first structure, okay? And it filled that in. Oh, it didn't fill in. I guess I didn't highlight the whole thing. There we go. Let's do this. Oh, because it was it's using different registers. That's why. So this would be T on that one, field 28. So now it's showing as person dot field 20. And as we figure out what is going on here, we can rename these fields here, or we rename these fields here, and wherever we set up the structure in here, it's gonna, gonna automatically change and actually show us what's going on. So here's here's one example of that. So I'm seeing push printf here, call the printf. The arguments to printf are a string and um, with some optional expressions in it, percent %s, percent %d, and then variables to insert in those locations. So if that's the call and that's the expression, those are the expressions, what's going to be this next argument to printf after the, the string? What does it look like? That is, or, or we'll do this one first. This is, first of all, this push is associated which, with which of these percents here? Here's your call. Here's your arguments. S. Who thinks it's S? Who thinks it's D? <laughs> oh, one and one. Anybody online want to uh, chime in? I think it's the percent S or the percent D. Yeah, of course. Yay, Corey. Okay, so we have this one here is going to be associated with percent D because remember with the call, you go backwards when you take a look at the pushes. So first argument, second argument, third argument. First argument is that. Second argument is going to be associated with the first expression. That argument is going to be associated with that expression. So what do we think is in EDX at this point? It's like an age, right? So we're going to say, okay, an EDX came from field 20. So let's say field 20 is an age. That changed that. And you see up here, it also changed. And in our structure definition, it changed. So what do we think that percent S is then? Yeah, maybe it's a name. So let's go and take a look at, okay, but we're not seeing it in, in, in offset, we're just seeing a, a reference to var eight. Well, what's, what does it look like var eight is pointing to? We see it used up here. And we see it referenced again down here as the, the string. So what var8 points to is the beginning of our structure. So that thing that we weren't sure of that was at the beginning of our structure looks like that is a name. And now we know this is a, actually, this is a, a set of um, uh, characters because it's, it's being used in that way in the printf. So we can actually right click on it and go to field type. We can say character. Oh, come on. I swear I did this before.
string. Okay, it is saying that it's a string. Age, we can say, okay, that is a number. And we're going to say show to us in decimal. And it just it makes note that, okay, when, when I see this being referenced, I'm in, um, I actually have a number to show you. Show that it actually shows here. I'm going to show it in, in decimal. Um, so something that we can do now is we can say, okay, well, I saw there's this move offset to, to this memory location. Remove there. We can take a look at these memory locations and we can go, okay, now I see there's, looks like there's a name, there's a, uh, with, with a string of zeros after it, and there's this 25 hex, and then there's kind of this, this offset thing. Let's say, okay, maybe the beginning of our struct starts here. Well, we can actually apply our structure to this by pressing, make sure I remember this right, Alt-Q. Yeah. That was Alt-Q. And we can say, okay, I think this is a person. And it will say directly convert structure, yes. And it'll say, okay, this is a person. And it'll fill in. And because we said show, show the age in decimal, it's actually going to show it there. Now we have zero and we have this other thing that we're not sure what they are yet. Um, but if we take a look at, at what that is, that looks like it's a memory address within our memory scope. So let's go and say, okay, that last field there is a field type offset. Data segment, data, okay. And now if we go back and take a look at this, it says, oh, okay, that is an offset, and hey, it's an offset to part. So this is part of a linked list here. And we can apply that to these other ones as well on Homer. I do Alt Q, person, okay, yes, convert to structure, and there you go. You have offset to this other structure. And if we we can rename that one. We think that one is, looks like that one is Marge. It looks like that one is Homer. That's the name there. And this offset to A Bart, it thinks it's A Bart because it thinks it's just a string. Well, we know that that's actually a structure now. Alt Q, person, okay, yes. And we could name that Bart. And so we could, we see this linked list here, see how it, it starts with Homer, maybe, because Homer points to Marge, and then Marge points to Bart. We've now constructed that, and we see that in memory. Are there any questions on that so far? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we'll break for lunch, but between now and when you come back from lunch at, uh, at 1230, try to, if you weren't um, doing this while I was doing it, try to go through and make sure that you understand how you create these structures here and apply them to memory space and identify that, hey, there's, there's a, um, offset, structure offsets going on and applying them within the code as well. So we know this is named now. Uh, except I called it that. <laughs> Uh oh, what did oh. I just do?
Okay. Where's that? Where's the undo so, now? Huh? Large. <laughs> Let me go back. Field twenty four. Oh yeah, we. It looks like field twenty four is another offset, which is interesting. We have two different offsets. Well, it could mean that we have a doubly linked list. Let me actually call this offset. Um, or it could mean that one of these, and I'll just go ahead and say one of these is next, and one of these is married to. And you get that from the how it's being used down here. You see this here and is married to because it checks to see if that. Actually, it's doing the checking here. Check to see if that is null. If it's not null, then it references it and says it's married to. So it's, it's building up your structure, defining, okay, I, I think my structure looks like this in terms of these are the, the members and their length, and then going through the code and based on how it's being used, naming them. Because you're not going to get the names because all that, all that was just in the header file that's not going to be um, within the executable at all. Everything's just being referenced by memory. Um, okay, so why don't you guys, uh, what, hold on, what, specify the last struct field with a reference in memory? Oh, okay. So to specify the struct field was a reference in memory, I right clicked on it in the structures window, or it's defined. I right click on the field, go down to field type, offset, and I say offset to data segment. And it, I, since I had already done that, oh, it removed it. Okay, let's do this for reals. Click on that, it's going to say, okay, choose base for offset. Oh, well, we'll, we'll say it's in the data segment. 